Hey everyone, I wanted to share a quick tip that uh, I've learned today in in regards to missing log files. Uh, so how did I get to this scenario of, of making this quick tip? Well, I had a Kubernetes cluster instrumented with the, the one agent. I wanted to run a job on that cluster and grab the log files from the cluster. So in my case, it was an open source security scanner called Chekhov. Um, and obviously that job would run and I would expect to see the logs in Dynatrace, but I didn't. I didn't see any logs. So I could see everything else. I could see the cluster. I could see the job. I could see the pods, the containers, uh, all of the metadata. The only thing that was blank was the logs uh, screen, the logs box, as you can see there. So, of course, I was wondering, well, why is that and, and how do I fix it? So digging into the documentation, and of course, as always, I'll put all of the links in the video description. The documentation describes how and why we collect or Dynatrace collects uh, logs in auto discovery mode. So down the bottom there, you'll see special rules for container logs, uh, particularly log monitoring on Kubernetes. So drilling into that link, I saw this list, which is the requirements for auto discovery. So that's when you've got the one agent on your cluster, how and when would logs be auto-discovered? Well, the Docker container D or cryo runtime is used. Well, from Dynatrace, I know that that's true. Uh, I, I can see that. So I'm using container D, that's, that's perfect. The process running in the container is an important process. Logs are written to the container standard out or standard error streams. So a lot of that I know is, is happening in, in my job in Chekhov. So that really drove me to dig into what an important process is or means to Dynatrace. So clicking that link takes you to this page. An important process to Dynatrace is one that meets at least one of the following criteria. And there's a big long list, processes that are well-known applications like Tomcat, WebSphere, application servers, anything written in Java, anything uh, .NET, databases, Node.js processes, PHP, Nginx, Apache, and on and on and on. So 99 times out of 100, you're not going to have this issue. You're going to drop the one agent onto the cluster and everything is just going to work. The logs are going to be there. This is very much an edge case where your uh, job runs for a short amount of time or in a process, uh, a, a language that isn't on this list. Now, I know that job only runs for about 45 seconds to a minute. I know it's also written in Go, and I know it doesn't have any TCP connections. So really, I'm starting to think, well, maybe Dynatrace out of the box doesn't consider that important enough because it that, that container doesn't hang around long enough. So how do I fix it? So looking at Dynatrace, and this is without any configuration, this is what I can see. This is what I saw this morning. I've got my a checkoff process. I can see the cluster it's running on, the namespace, the type, and so on and so forth. Now, if I go into a settings, log monitoring, log storage configuration, and create a new rule, I can actually explicitly tell Dynatrace to capture those logs. So here I'm saying, well, yep, include in the storage and then add a matcher. And the matcher is the condition that Dynatrace will use. So in this case, I'm saying where the container name is Chekhov. You can also pick lots of other conditions like the process group, the log source, the namespace. So you could do this across an entire namespace and just enable logs for namespace and so on and so forth. First, I'm gonna demo this without any sort of configuration. So we shouldn't see any logs. Then I'll create the configuration and of course, we should see the log files when I re-execute the job. Okay, so I'm in Dynatrace. I'm in the log storage configuration screen just to demonstrate that I haven't created anything at all yet. And if you want to follow along, I'm just using the uh, default demo job that Chekhov give on their website. So they provide a YAML file which creates a namespace, a service account, all of the cluster role and cluster role bindings for the permissions that Chekhov needs. And then all the way down the bottom here, we have the job. And this is just a standard Kubernetes job that runs the Chekhov container. So I'm going to go ahead and run that job.
Okay, excellent. So the checkoff job has completed successfully. It took about three minutes to run. Jumping in the Dynatrace, I can see all of the Kubernetes events. I can see that the job completed. I can see the pod name itself. But again, as expected, no logs. So let's go ahead and configure that log capture rule. And then we'll rerun the job. And hopefully we should get log files. Okay, so the second iteration of the job has now executed, and I'll jump back into Dynatrace. So, and if I refresh the page, now in the logs panel, we'll see all of the output from Chekhov right in the logs panel. And of course, we can now use this, filter it using DQL, uh, chart it, create metrics, create alerts, all of that good stuff. So now all of my Chekhov logs are uh, being successfully stored in Grail in Dynatrace. So in summary then, you may never need this information. As I say, most of, of the things that you deploy onto a cluster, the one agent is gonna see as an important process and therefore capture the logs for you out of the box automatically with zero configuration. However, if you think you should have logs and you're not seeing them, have a look at this video and con configure the log capture rules. And of course, you can do this at scale with the Dynatrace configuration as code utility, aka Monaco, or of course, the Terraform provider. Don't forget, there are a number of ways you can get help and assistance. The Dynatrace community, community.dynatrace.com. Uh, if you need a Dynatrace trial, it's at dynatrace.com forward slash trial. And as always, I hope this was useful. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon. Bye.